In this video, we're going to take a look at speech recognition. And this is, of course, how it's implemented in the SIDLib libraries. And, of course, uh, there's also, if you're familiar with CQC, which is built on top of SIDLib, there's a very fancy uh, voice uh, system there. Uh, we have two, actually. One is uh, via the Echo, the Amazon Echo, and the other is uh, locally via um, uh, Windows speech recognition. And that's what we're going to look at here. We'll take a... a I look at it at basic form of it here, and then we'll uh, demonstrate what it can do. You know, when when it's in full bore mode. So what we're doing here is um, we're in the samples, the basic samples section, and there's one called Speech Rec Reco One, and it's just a very simple speech recognition uh, sample. And what it does is it loads a grammar file, and I'll talk about grammars here in a minute, and then it just waits for you to um, uh, to speak, and it checks what you're saying against the rules and the grammar. Now, I can't get too deep into the whole grammar thing here. It's kind of complicated, but uh, we'll look at a simple one here, which I've uh, cooked up just for this demonstration here. It's called simple GRXML, which I guess is grammar XML. This is a fairly uh, common uh, format. Um, I don't think it's specific to, um, to Windows. I think it's a standard, or semi-standard anyway, at least. So uh, I'm just going to open up the one here, simple. And it's in XML, and there's some housekeeping stuff up here. We can ignore that. And then there's basically just definitions of rules. And in order to not have to have just one big giant list, there, uh, what we're doing here is we're saying we're creating a rule, and it's a hierarchical, so we can reference other rules. So this is our top rule, and it just exists to contain the list of other things that we can do. And all of the rules have various sorts of um, of items within them, and uh, items are just things that are uh, explicit and then there are other things like one of which means you want to pick one of these or the other or one of these in this list and there are others which we'll see below like uh, do once or zero times or one or two times that sort of thing so you can say that something has to be done uh, has to be seen a number of times in order to match and so forth so what basically what we're doing here is we're setting up a set of what you'd call utterances which are you know recognizable sentences in the grammar that uh, it will look for and I've defined two kind of top-level uh, rules here. One's called go away, and one's called shut up. This is a very positive video. And these um, are just uh, references to rules down here which, where we actually define them. So if we look at go away, um, it has a repeat one, zero or one option, which means that we can this can start with please, or it might not start with please. So uh, it, it is maybe please and then item is unconditional so there's always got to be a go away and the nice thing about this whole thing the whole scheme and it's kind of complicated if it's not wrapped we make it very easy to do here is that you can define output from this rule and that will show up when it gets passed to the program so we can use this information here and this is our own stuff this is not fixed we can just define this stuff and it shows up for us to react to so we get all the important information that we want to get out of this in this case, I'm setting an action, which is go away, so that I know what happened. And in this case, you know, there aren't any others, but there might have been queries or other things. So I'm saying this is a command and then a target, which in this case is my boss. I'm saying go away. And, okay, so in here is shut up. And so in this case, we have the same sort of repeat once or uh, zero or one. But then we have a, a one of inside, so we can either say, would you please or please. And both of these are optional because it's in this repeat zero or one. And then we have an unconditional shut up. And then similar, similar to above, we have the action, the shut up, and the command, and the target in this case is mother-in-law. Not that I have a mother-in-law, but if I did, this would be for her. Okay, so this is just a very simple example of what um, a grammar looks like. And believe me, it can get very complicated uh, when, when the going gets rough. But... Um, for for some very for some fairly simple stuff you can it doesn't take a whole lot to do um, a nice little set of commands okay so um, now let's uh, look at how we use this I'm going to close this down here if um, if you look up above here there's a couple of speech rec uh, oriented things one of them is um, speech grammar comp which is a compiler and what I'm going to do is invoke that on this simple grammar and compile it into a binary file that the uh, speech recognition engine can can load. So I'll do speech, uh, was it grammar comp? And then it wants just the input file, simple grxml, and an output file. I'll say simple dot config for lack of a better name. 
Right, so hit compile that. If we look here now, there is a simple config. And now if we run speech rec reco guy, he just wants the file, the configuration file. That's all he really needs. And we'll look at the code for this in a minute. Oops, sorry. Speech reco one, simple config. Okay, so now basically I can just kind of speak those commands. So I could say, please go away. Right. And you can see here that it has given us the information. I'm just dumping this out to the console, you know, this the information that the um, speech engine is giving to us. So um, it gives a basic confidence level, which is uh, 0.91, which is good. Um, it tells us the semantic rules or the semantic information and how confident it is about those. And because these things could come from various sub commands from within it. So they're, in this case, they're all really basically from one but they could be coming from different nested commands. So this kind of lets you get a feel for the overall or the, the detailed uh, level of, uh, of confidence it has in each of the particular things that it is gathering up. And then it says this is the rule that got invoked, which is go away, which is up under the top level rule. So this would be a path of something slash something if, there were, if they were more nested. And then the overall uh, confidence level for the rule, which is good. And then we could uh, do the other one, which uh, if I'm remembering correctly was... Um, oh, actually, I just tr I triggered it accidentally there, and you can see that it's very low confidence. So that was just a bogus trigger, and we would know that by looking at the confidence level, though we should just ignore that. So I think it was, uh, would you please shut up? There we go. And we get the, the normal sort of uh, high confidences that we would expect for a good match. Right? And as you can imagine, it's very easy to make use of this information since you can get whatever you want here. You just uh, grab that data out and you react to it as desired. Okay, so just to hit any key to exit this guy. All right, so let's um, bring up the code and just take a look at it. It's very simple. So we have just an input and output console. We have the grammar path that we're going to get. This is just housekeeping stuff here. In this case, this is a very simple sample. So we're just starting up a main thread on a, on a local function, uh, not the, the, the fancier way of doing it, but just, just keep it very simple for these um, basic uh, samples. We all put a little blurb here to say what this is. We look for the to have one command line parameter, which we have to have. And if it's there, we just get it out. And we have to um, fully qualify that for whatever reason the, their um, compiler doesn't deal well so well with uh, relative paths, I think. So we just complete that path to get the full one. And then all we're doing is we set up a speech recognition object. And we give it a name, which is just for logging purposes, error, log error logging purposes and such. And then um, we initialize it. And we could have created a audio source to tell it to use, but we're just passing no pointer to say use the default which is the same one I'm using to record this as well. So it's just the microphone input. And then once we do that, we tell it to load that grammar from the file, which is what we passed into the program as the parameter. Um, it's not dynamic, which we'll get into in a minute. So we're passing false here, which that just tells it nothing is going to change about this grammar once it's loaded. And that lets it, I guess, be more efficient. And since it isn't, um, if it was dynamic, we would do some other stuff in here. And then we would call. And in the end, we have to call grammar loading done. And that tells it, it's done now, so you can do any last minute uh, fix up stuff that you need to do. And then it just um, it creates a uh, speech reco event, which is how the uh, engine reports events. And it just um, it's just sits here in a loop and it waits for a while for an event to come in. And if one does, it dumps it out to the console. And, if, and then it just checks for a character and goes back to the top and waits for another event. And then when we hit a key, it breaks out, it terminates. So that's all that's really required. So of course, you know, in a, a in in a realistic application, this would be done in a separate thread, which would just be always in a, a loop waiting for events. Either that, or there would be a thread that is waiting for the events and is queuing them up for some other thread to process or something like that. But um, it, it's not very complicated to deal with at all because all you're doing is just grabbing events and reacting to them, either here directly or you're queuing them up and someone else grabs them out of a queue and processes them there. So. There's not a whole lot to it. And since you get to define what information you get out of it, uh, it's very easy to react to. Okay, So um, I'm going to kill this here, and then I'm going to set up um, our CQC voice uh, demo. I can show you uh, what a more realistic um, usage of this uh, system can do. Okay, so now let's take a look at CQC voice. 
which is part of the CQC automation system, which is built on top of Sidlib. And it uses the exact same engine that we just looked at. So nothing um, special there. It's just uh, a lot fancier grammar and, um, uh, and therefore a lot more work in terms of reacting to what was said and picking the right uh, command and that sort of thing. So you do this by configuring CQC to tell it what rooms you have and what equipment you have in each room and so forth. And that lets it know, that lets CQC voice know um, when you're referring to lights and things like that, that, you know, what, what, what it is you're talking about. And, and you can also enable it for different rooms and so forth. So it, it can know where the command came from. And it involves basically uh, two different modes. There's a sort of a one shot mode and there is a uh, conversational uh, type of mode and you can use either one that you would like. Um, I've got the window up here. This is it's a tray application for whatever reason Microsoft decided that we can't do voice recognition or speech recognition from um, the background. I don't know why that is. It's ridiculous, but we have to do it as a tray application. And I just have the little monitor window up here so we can see what it's doing. All right, so let me, first I'll just do a, um, a a single shot mode, and the name that I'm using here is configurable too, so you can call it whatever you'd like. Zero. What is today's date? Today is Sunday, March 31st. And you can see the same sort of information, except just a little bit more here. This is the standard information that CQC Voice uh, wants to get out of each command. You know, of course, in a simple command like that, not all of it is set. And these are particular rules, and we can see the, the, the confidences, which even though I stuttered a little bit there and didn't quite get it right, um, uh, it still did quite well. And so you can also do a kind of a conversational sort of uh, mode, what you do like this. Hello, Zira. How may I assist you? What is the current cooling set point? The cooling set point is 80 degrees. Set it to 78 degrees. The cooling set point was set to 78 degrees. What is my CQC version? Your CQC version is 5.3.943. What is the current external temperature? The current external temperature is 76. That will be all, thank you. Just call if you need anything. So you can, once you're done, you can uh, either just let it time out or you can dismiss her or him, her, however you'd like to refer to him or her. And um, there's a, a set of, of commands. And the thing about it here that you have to understand is that in this case, they very are, are very much are dynamic uh, in terms of the grammar. So what we do is we have uh, a quite complex grammar and then we have replacement tokens inside that or replacement sections inside of the, the grammar that we can look at all of your lights and your security zones and so forth and we can plug them into the grammar and, and customize it for you on the fly. So otherwise it would be very difficult to do this. And it's already actually very difficult to do it, but at least this way it is actually doable. So, for instance, if um, we could do something like this. Zira, is the kitchen door zone currently closed? Yes, the kitchen door is currently closed. So it knows about my zones, and I could do something like here. Let me see, I'm having to look these things up because I, I'm using just a demo system here with some demo uh, drivers, so I don't have these completely memorized. Zira, turn on the living room TV light. The living room TV light has been turned on. And I just saw it come on in the driver there. Uh, and we could do something like set a dimmer level. Zero. Set the living room TV light to 50%. The light has been set to level 50. And I saw that happen. Okay. So you can do all those sorts of things because it knows about your lights and your zones and, and so forth. And there's also a reminder system. You can give it r reminders. Uh, I'm not sure if I can get this right here just by memory, but something like um, um, Zira, remind me in five minutes to call the dentist. Okay, I will remind you at 11.01. And then 11.01, it'll tell me to call the dentist, and then it will remove that uh, reminder from the list. All right, so there you go. That's um, uh, more or less how it all works. And you can see that y you could very easily uh, implement this in your own app, your own Citilib based applications to, to leverage uh, speech recognition. Now, of course, this is not going to be the same as doing it through something like the Amazon Echo. You know, there are pros and cons there. Um, they have very fancy uh, 
uh, neural network based speech recognition capabilities and um, their microphone array and the echo is um, very good so it picks up the voice very easily across the room and so forth um, in the case of um, the windows traditionally it was used to connect which has a, a microphone array but that's been discontinued but there are other products of that sort are, are more de are dedicated microarray products out there, mostly for the um, what you would I guess you'd say the the commercial or corporate um, conference room sort of uh, market. So they're a little more pricey, but there are some reasonable ones that are probably considerably better than the Connect was, which was never that was never really what it was primarily intended to do. So, but you do need a microphone array if you're not going to be speaking directly into a microphone, as I am right here, because it has to hear you across the room. And these microphone arrays are able to dynamically uh, reject off-access noise and that sort of thing, and it makes a huge difference. But basically, um, once you get that set up, you can, you know, you have a fixed set of grammar uh, rules. In this case, because we have, you know, they have to be written ahead of time. Whereas with the Amazon Echo, we can let you define them, and they're built on the fly. But at the same time, it's not going to be nearly as um, it's easy to set up because you have to customize all those. Uh, commands and stuff, whereas with CQC Voice, they're all fixed. So there's some trade-off there, and you'd have to kind of see which one works best for you. But uh, in terms of the actual speech recognition engine, it's easy to use, and you can uh, very easily leverage it in your applications. So that's it. Thanks. We'll see you in the next video.